Okay, good. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the November 15th regular meeting of the Oyster River Cooperative School Board. Uh, before we start, I would like to say that um, a big thank you to our superintendent search committee that has spent a ton of hours, I don't even know how many, over the last, particularly the last couple of days, um, diligently, you know, doing their work um, in order to get us a really good superintendent. So I just want to say a big thank you um, to everyone who is part of that committee. Um, and moving right along, um, approval of the agenda. Could I have an approval of the agenda? Brian? Second? Uh, Tom? All in favor? Uh, oh, is there hope? Oh, discussion? Okay. I'd like to um, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda just to add under uh, board discussion a discussion of adding an additional meeting uh, prior to our budget deadline. Given that we've been having truncated meetings and with, this is typically a pretty lengthy process. Okay. So we do have one already built in, Dan. An extra meeting for budget. So is that the? It's uh thir it's the twenty ninth, I believe. Oh, it's not on. Okay. So did I miss it? No, it's in your um, budget schedule. Okay. It's not on this agenda because okay. it's an optional meeting that the board invokes when they want it. Okay. It's the fifth Wednesday of the month, so it would be normally an extra Wednesday that we would have off. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're, we're keeping the agenda as it is. Uh, could I have a show of hands? And that is seven in favor and the student rep in favor. Um, public comments. Could I have a show of hands how many people intend to speak tonight? Okay, um, so we will um, have three minutes each. And um, if Julie would like to come up. There you go. All right, all set. All right, thank you. Good evening, my name is Julie Kelly. I live here in Durham, and I am a proud parent of two Oyster River graduates. I'm a member of the Integrated Waste Management Advisory Committee here in town, a member of the District Sustainability Committee, and I facilitate the Oyster River High School Sustainability Scholarship. And I am here tonight to ask for your help in an initiative that I'm trying to roll out in our schools, which is right in line with the district policy ECFA and ECFA-R. That goal that I have in mind is to make the events, the on-site events at our schools sustainable. Um, and knowing that we have four schools, I thought I would start this goal uh, small, and um, know, knowing that I have a lot of uh, background in sports banquets, my kids were both athletes in the schools, I thought I'd start there and try and make the sports banquets at the high school sustainable events. So I reached out to Andy Lathrop and asked him if he would be willing to purchase um, reusable uh, linens for sports teams to use for their end of season events and asked him if we could use the large jugs um, to offset single use plastics at the banquets. I also spoke with Meredith St. Ange to uh, ask her if she would mind putting together a list of sustainable paper products that could be used for the events um, as they came around. She, both were great to work with. Um, I put together an introductory letter, sent it to Andy and asked him to send it out to all of the sports teams, the coaches and the booster programs. And he did that. And I will admit that I got um, a very small amount of feedback. I, I heard from one team. Um, the, Boys soccer program was willing to work with me to try this uh, initiative, this goal. And I was excited about it because I'll tell you, they have 
a sports banquet that is for 250 people. Uh, they planned it for this past Monday, the 13th. Um, I reached out, it was here at the middle school, I reached out to the middle school to make sure that there would be compo compost bins and recycling bins available. Um, they had all their supplies, they had the tablecloths and the, the jugs, they came to the event. Unfortunately, it didn't work out as we had hoped. Uh, when they got here, the compost bins were not available. Uh, they were covered up as, as if not to use. There were no recycling bins available. There were two large bins uh, for garbage. So unfortunately, what ended up happening was all those compostable goods were put in the, the solid waste bins. Excuse me, Julie, with, if you can wrap up, please. Sure, along with the um, plastics and whatever else had to be put away. I'm here to ask for your help. I have some ideas. I recognize this is a work in progress. Um, but I'd like to ask for your help to make this initiative one that will work and effective. Thank you. Thank you. I believe it's now. I get it. We have uh, three minutes. I'm sorry. Um, three minutes, please. Yes, I know. I'm, I wrote it out, and I'm going to read fast. My name is Nell Neal. I live in Durham, and I am a retired teacher from this school district. One way I spend my time in retirement is to serve as chair on the Integrated Waste Management Advisory Committee in Durham. This committee is commonly referred to as the IMAC Committee because of the lengthy name. The purpose of the IMAC Committee is to work closely with the Durham Department of Public Works to help educate Durham residents as to the many ways households can reduce the amount of trash they generate each week. This in turn helps reduce the amount Durham pays in tipping fees at the landfill as well as helping to care for the health of the earth. Trash generated at the schools in Durham become part of Durham's waste stream. You may have noticed our latest educational initiatives that are designed around uh, composting recycling right and reducing single-use plastics. We have designed and placed around town um, signs and banners uh, delivering this message. As part of this initiative, we have also sponsored educational programs in collaboration with the library on these same topics. We have a third program coming up on the 28th on microplastics at 6.30 in the library. It is a story of 56 fifth graders in Red Hook, Brooklyn. These 11-year-olds on, took on the roles of citizen scientists and community advocates. Part of their focus was on their own school where they took action in their own cafeteria to eliminate all single-use plastics. We have been a throwaway society for many years. At school sports events, we can be awash with single-use products. Plastic forks, spoons, styrofoam paper and plastic plates and cups, plastic drink bottles, plastic or paper, paper tablecloths, all headed for the landfill after just a couple of hours of use. Julie's proposed initiative is an opportunity to educate our students and to help our students to f and families become part of adopting more sustainable practices. Um, in the past, there have been individuals in the district who have promoted sustainable practices around sports events, but when that person moved on, the practices moved on as well. The IMAC committee is here today to support Julie's proposal. We urge the board to consider using sustainable practices as standard practice. Real lasting change comes when an organization makes systemic changes that become a way of life. It is time to move recycling and composting to center stage and give our students the chance to be the change we all want to see and know is needed. Thank you. Thank you. Brian? Hi, good evening, school board. Uh, my name is Brian Turnbull. I'm a resident of Durham. Uh, I'm speaking here tonight in support of the addition of a full-time music teacher teaching position to the fiscal year 2025 budget. Uh, as the administration and staff detailed in the November 1st meeting, the need for this position has become a pressing matter as the number of string orchestra students uh, exceed the sustainable workload uh, for a single teacher. Uh, in the interest of time to allow others the opportunity to speak here at the podium, 
I'm not going to repeat those details that are so well captured in the minutes. Uh, instead, and I don't want to preempt anybody who has something to say on this topic, uh, I'd like to ask those in the hall uh, with me to raise their hand if they also support the board moving forward, adding a full-time music teacher position. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much for your consideration on this important matter. Thank you. Thank you. Lindsay? Thank you for the opportunity to share a few thoughts. My name is Lindsay Boyson, and my son Ethan is a cello player in the high school orchestra. My daughter Claire plays trumpet at the middle school. In addition to being a parent and a community member, my husband and I are both music teachers. Although I teach college now, I was a high school band director for the majority of my professional career. I want to begin by simply saying thank you for being so incredibly supportive of music education. The gifted music teachers of Oyster River couldn't do what they do without your support. I feel incredibly grateful to live in a community that values the importance of general music education, but also provides enormous opportunity for performance, creativity, and community through music, so thank you. Over the last 10 years, Andrea Van Oyen has created a district-wide string program that is admired and respected across the state. Her vision for the program and its continued growth and sustainability is a testament to how passionate she is about orchestra, how inspiring she is as a teacher, and how committed she is to providing her students with the very best education and performance opportunities. An additional full-time position would allow more growth and opportunity. As someone who has personally lived the life of a high school music teacher, the number of commitments outside of work, evenings and weekends away, the sheer number of students, and the extra instructional and technical demand is huge. In Andrew's position, you are now adding an entire middle school program. This program, due to the nature of middle school, our middle school, is an elementary beginning string program and a middle school string program. With consistent year-to-year -year growth, this is truly unsustainable for one music teacher. An additional full-time music teacher would ensure that Oyster River students would have the opportunity to have more differentiated, ability-tailored instruction, especially at the high school, that would allow the continue, program to continue to grow in ways that our Oyster River students in this community deserve. By hiring a full-time position, you will ensure the very, very best candidates and truly find someone who is willing to continue the vision and growth of the program while also providing new insights, strengths, and expertise. I'm so thankful to be part of a community that values music, and I hope that you will support this additional position. As a community member and a parent, I support this additional position and believe that this, is, this will allow Andrea to create an even stronger community of string players and forge a continued path of longevity and vitality within the program. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak this evening? Okay, uh, with that then, we will continue on with our agenda. Oh, Heather? Oh no, just turning it off, thank you. Um, all right, approval of the minutes. Can I have a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes? Heather? Can I have a second? And Tom? Any corrections to the minutes? Nothing? Okay. All in favor then? Seven in favor and the student rep in, is in favor. The minutes are approved. Um, district reports, we have the- Denise, we need to do the non-public ones too. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes of oh, November 1st? Heather? A second, Brian? Any changes to the non-public meeting minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Seven in favor, and student rep abstains. All right, now moving along um, to business administrator report. Make sure I hit the right button. Thank you, Heather. So in your packet, you will find the uh, fiscal year financial status as of November 8th. The format is slightly different than you've seen in previous uh, years. We've switched over to the e, um, ERP Pro, so it's the same format, just now automatically generated out of the system. 
Um, based on my experience, this report reflects where I expect the budget to be as of this time of the year. It's early. Um, we are in the process of moving things around. You may see some positive and negatives we found during the budget. During the conversion, some things didn't necessarily go to where we wanted to them to go, but we're still we're cleaning that up. So hopefully by the next report, you'll see um, less negatives and positives where you see something above the other, like New Hampshire retirement that negative needs to go down because we're not over budget in that line. So are there any questions from anybody? Okay, so today is a big day for us. We received the estimated adequacy number from the state for FY25. We were waiting for that number to come today. Um, based on a really quick review of it, it appears that we will be receiving approximately $33,000 more in state adequacy. So that's good news for us. Last year, you guys had received a significant cut, which then impacted the budget. So we don't in, in anticipate that this in additional revenue will have any huge impact, but it definitely helps us not have to make any additional cuts before our meeting on the 29th. Any, any other questions for Amy? Because, because our revenue or our adequacy revenue came in as expected we actually canceled our uh, finance committee meeting tomorrow night because that was going to be dealing with it if we didn't have to like last year where we all were scrambling at the end so we'll not be having a finance committee meeting tomorrow i do have a question when you say thirty-three thousand, you mean per student additional per the district no. oh that's, i wish that's what i'm asking no, we only get 4,100 a student. Okay, 33 total. 33 total for the district, But it's yes. not a cut, okay, that's fine. It would be nice. Anybody else? Thank you, Amy. Student rep. Alrighty, I just have a few successes to announce first. So volleyball won the state championship for the second year in a row. And girls cross country placed second in New England. So that's very impressive. Um, New Hampshire actually was three out of the top five uh, slots. And then another sports, Bedford versus Portsmouth this Friday at 6 p.m. Both are undefeated, so it's gonna be a good game. And then upcoming the play is the 16th, 17th, 18th, 7 p.m. with a matinee on Saturday at 2 p.m. And then we have a parent forum on hate speech the 27th at 6.30 in the high school auditorium. And then no school next Wednesday and don't come in Thursday either. Uh. <laughs> and then the mental health panel is on the 20th. Um, and while I have this moment, I just think it's incredibly important to the student body that we talk about uh, mental health counselor. Um, I've heard a lot of the student feedback and New Hampshire in general is really lacking in mental health resources. And I think for the safety and the well-being of our students, a mental health counselor is really important. That's all I have. Is that uh, November 20th, next yes. Monday? Yes, it is. What time? 6.30. 6.30, thank you. And that is at the high school, correct? Okay, thank you. If I could just follow up, Mib. Um, the play is Ar Arsenic and Old Lace. It will be a great play, very family-friendly play. So if you're looking forward to it as I am, you know, please, please go. It's, it's going to be a great production. Uh, in preparation, I actually watched the Cary Grant movie last week so I could remember what the play was all about, and it's just great fun. Okay, thank you, Maeve. And that is congratulations to the teams. That's really impressive. Um, Superintendent Search Committee, did you have anything to announce now prior to our workshop? So no, but yes. Um, all right, so... For everyone, since I have you all as a captive audience, haha. -ha. Um, so we started this process um, last spring when we hired NESDEC to help us out. And the advertisement for the position went out in August. That closed the last Friday of October. We did a variety of in-person and um, remote focus groups, as well as had a survey that NESJEC generated that folks could be part of. And all of that was used, that data was used to build a candidate profile, which provided four sort of guideposts for what we as a district value in a new superintendent. That was given to the screening committee who started their work 
two and a half weeks ago. And so we met twice to work on procedure and questions, and then the past two days, um, Monday and Tuesday, we interviewed candidates, the uh, candidates for superintendent. The interviews went extremely well. We had some really great conversations with folks, and we were really pleased with the outcome. The screening committee finished their work last night and have proposed names to move forward. Those names are now with NESDEC as they confirm those folks' willingness to continue to participate in that process. So I can't announce them tonight. Sorry, I really love to, uh, because they are getting their things in order, telling folks on their end that this is coming down the pike potentially. So in order to honor their privacy, we're waiting and you'll see a press release at some point where we announce the names. The next step of the process will start the last week of November and the first full week of December. We're going to bring those folks to campus. They will spend the day with our administrators, with our students in all of the building, with the central office staff, and with teachers and students. And we will have a public forum in the evening for the community to get to come and meet each of the candidates. Each candidate will come a separate day, and um, that will all be publicized similar to the focus groups were publicized. You'll see emails from the district. They'll show up in the town updates, that sort of thing. So keep your eyes peeled as we start getting that stuff locked down in the next week and a half. It really helps that there's a major holiday in the middle. So, you know, we're super excited about that. Um, so at that point, and then after they do their thing, they will be interviewed by the school or the school board. And then we, as a body up here, make the next step and make that decision. We'll work on negotiations, and the hope is to announce our next superintendent at the last school board meeting in December. And so that is the timeline we're looking at, just sort of reminding everybody what that looks like. So now go tell your friends, uh, because you heard it here first. So I don't have anything to say on the people. I'm sorry, I really wish I, would, I could, but since we just finished the work last night, uh, it takes a couple of days for things to get lined up. But I do need to say some thank yous. Um, the screening committee was comprised of 15 people, the three of us from the school board, me, Brian, and Tom, and I'll read everybody else in a second. And it was a wonderful process. It was a group of people who were trusting, who were very candid, who were respectful, who were curious, and who were thoughtful. And I could not be more pleased with the work they have done over the past two days. They did the district a, a very, they did the district a huge service and they represented us well. And that has come back in all the thank you notes that the candidates have written back to the screening committee thanking them for their efforts. And so if you see these folks, tell them job well done because they did a really great job. So on the screening committee, um, we had Rebecca Noe, Rachel Blancet, Catherine Plord, Karina Dolcino, Kristen Hughes, Sean Kelly, Tyler Petrea, Elise Bacon, Kelly Ickes, Debbie Rierick Curden, and Todd Selig. Those were the 15 members. Um, additionally, Pam Purser met all of the candidates when they came in and entertained them for the 15 or so minutes between each of the interviews. And then Tom Canale provided food uh, from child nutrition for the screening committee so we didn't wither and die um, during our very long interview days. So, um, so that's a huge thank you. Um, they did a really fantastic job and we are really excited for you to get to meet the folks and hear about them when I can finally tell you. Thank you, Heather. Um, and uh, I just realized is that I believe we were supposed to include the salary discussion on tonight's agenda as well. Not tonight, we are not doing that tonight. Since we have the workshop working on getting the school board prepared to run the interview process with the candidates when they come in, um, we will worry about that a little further along. All right, thank you. 
All right, um, and moving along, we have unanimous consent agenda. Um, we have a request for two maternity leaves of absence. Um, is there anyone that needs to um, discuss either of these? Okay, um, bearing none, I will go ahead and make a motion to adopt the unanimous consent agenda, uh, approving a Mastway maternity leave of absence from November 2023 through March 4th, 2024, and a Oyster River High School maternity leave of absence from approximately May 2024 through the end of the year. Can I have a second? Heather? All in favor? Seven in favor, the student rep in favor. Okay, our discussion item for the night is the fiscal year 25 draft budget. Amy has done a really great job of laying out various scenarios. The scenarios are really just conversation starters. Ultimately, you can pick and choose or reallocate how these options uh, look. Um, we can just go through them really quickly, Amy, so that the public can hear what we're talking about. Yep. So in your packet, you received um, the initial, like if you if you if you have it, the public doesn't have it, but the original presentation to the board, which showed all of the requests, not including yellow sheets, and the anticipated revenue that we had gone over. So that's in the white box. That was the original presented to the board. Um, and then on the memo, it outlines each option, and the change to each option is underlined. So in option one, we're looking to capture the savings from the retirements that we have received from the early retirements, but does not include the use of the revenue from the trust funds. So option one shows a reduction of the $335,000 um, for retirements. So that's what option one is, but it does include the first phase of Mastway and air conditioning for the high school. So that's what's in option one. Option two still captures the savings from the retirements. It includes the use of $500,000 in revenue from the trust funds, $250,000 from the special education trust fund, and $250,000 from the health insurance trust fund. This option has the 500,000 for the phase of Massway and the 264,000 um, for air conditioning at the high school. So that's the only change from option one to two is the use of additional revenues. Option three is the same as option two, but it does not have the $264,000 in for air conditioning for the high school. So that's the difference between two and three. We've reduced that for the high school. Option four, it does also has the reduction for the air conditioning at the high school, but it includes $132,244 for a behavioral health counselor. So again, it has a retirement savings, additional revenue, $500,000 for Massway, no air conditioning at the high school, and the addition of the behavioral health counselor. Option five continues um, with the retirement savings, I know this is repetitive, so I do apologize for everybody. It sounds like I'm just going on and on. Uh, captures retirement savings, includes the use of 500,000 in revenue, still has Mastway, and it includes 264,000 for air conditioning at the high school and the behavioral health counselor. Option six has um, all of the same items, but also includes 104,799 for a strings teacher. So option six has everything in it. Option seven, captures the savings from retirements, uses additional revenue from trust funds, but we're also asking to use an additional 110,000 from our reserve from fund balance. So the district is allowed to hold up to 5% of the prior year's net assessment. Right now we have approximately $1.3 million in that account, and we're asking to use some of that money to help pay for um, having the strings teacher, the behavioral health, um, oh, I'm sorry, does not have AC, but does have the behavioral health in that option. So we were trying to bring that down to be at your rate. You wanted to be at 4.32, this gets you to, oops, sorry, that might be me. Uh, it might be a four, point, that's a 4.33 increase and the board was looking for their middle of the road was 4.32. Amy, I know you put this in the folder mm -hmm. probably a few days ago, if not yes. last week. Um, I 
I know we had a small increase in adequacy. Is that reflected in here or? No, because we received that today. So that would probably put us at the 4.32 if yeah. we plug that in, so, yeah. which was our top goal, so. Correct. Tiana. Uh, what I want to see if there's any possibility of being able to project the uh, options with the numbers onto the screen so people in the audience can see it. Is that a possibility? I'm okay. I'm just thinking future would be great so the audience yeah. would be able to see what we're looking at. Otherwise, it's mm -hmm. a little hard to understand. Uh, but one of the questions I have here is that none of the all the options included the $500,000 for the Mastway cafeteria expansion. Um, and I don't recall prioritizing that in that way. Why is there no option that doesn't include that? So this isn't a definitive list. This is a conversation starter. If the board wishes to see an option, other options, we can create those for the next meeting. So if the board wants to see one without the Mastway addition, we certainly can do that. This wasn't intended to be everything and every option we could think of. We brought it here so that we could start the conversation. The board can then redirect us in other directions like that. That's fine. We would do that. Um, so a follow-up question with that is that regarding removing funds for the tr from the trust fund in order to pay for this, are the limitations on what those trust funds are guaranteed for? You said that you had some of them was from the health insurance and one was from special ed with 250K a piece. I'm assuming those are limited on what they actually could be going for considering they're designated a certain way. Yes, because we anticipated, um, well, well actually the anticipated increase in health insurance, that trust fund is for, to smooth out for an, um, increases to health insurance, so that's the purpose. So when we, re when we ask the trustees to send us that money, that money is fit for the increase for health insurance. Same thing with special education. We have a couple of um, situations where the special education costs are going up for placements, and that's what that trust fund is for. So those are, for the purposes that they can be used for. Okay, so, so the thing is that you would be talking about freeing up that, that money, but that wouldn't, okay. I just had to make sure that there's, there's costs and benefits to doing things that way, and I just wanted to mm -hmm. see how things were earmarked. I, I think we need to have some more discussion about um, other options that don't include the cafeteria expansion. I know we're talking about the capital improvement plan, but I think we need to look at it, so. Tom. Um, because my understanding is option seven comes in around 4.3, is that correct? It would seem, to, I'm wondering if there's a possibility of an option eight that includes the strings position and then captures and maybe another 50,000 from retained fund balance, which I'm not sure what risk that has, but it seems to be very modest risk based on our conversation. And 25, maybe 25,000 if there's can be savings in that $55 million budget, you know, if, there, if that savings could be found, that would, that would bring us to 75,000, which would pr come pretty close to paying for the Strings position. So it would, it would leave like 25,000, which would be just a fraction of a fraction of a percent. Um, and that would pretty much, I mean, that's, that's the option that would get us pretty much everything on the plate, right? Then we could maybe say take things off the plate if we need, but if, if that's conceivable, I mean, I'm saying it's easy for me to say fi find 25,000, but whether that's possible. But in the past, we've, when we've gotten close to something we really want, we've kind of been able to find it somehow. So I don't know if just the feasibility of that. So it's the same answer I gave Gianna. We can create an option that looks just like that. We can create the option for a, 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 a model without the cafeteria. We can create an option where we increase the revenue and find savings, but we also just increased our revenue by $33,000 tonight. So finding the difference is as easy as declaring that as part of so, our budget. So if you found 75,000 plus the 33,000, you paid for the yeah. strings position, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are there other options the board would like to see? Yes, um, well, Dan, go ahead, go first. Um, just a process question first. Um, historically, the, and your memo is clear that you've, you've developed this in, um, after conversations or maybe 
directly with the Finance Committee. Is the Finance Committee going to do a deeper dive on this, or has that been done? Is this reflective of that? In the past, the Finance Committee has basically presented us with the options. This is all fine. I, I don't have a problem with the difference in process, but I just want to know where we're at. We came up with these options in our last meeting, so we did, we did dig deep. We'll continue to, as we always do, because we're trying to find pennies and I'll look under the couches, couch cushions, and try to find what we can. Uh, believe it or not, even though it sounds like a small amount of money, $33,000 that we got today makes a huge difference in getting some of these positions. So um, obviously this is just, like Jim said, this is just a starting point to, for a topic for discussion. You know, this is when the, I always say this is when the horse trading starts, and we're all like, well, let's see what our priorities are and see where it all lies and where it, where it falls and what we're comfortable with, what we're comfortable with presenting to the taxpayers. And, um, you know, a lot of thought goes into it on the finance committee, but we also, our goal really is just to make it a little cleaner for you to, to decide while we're going through the weeds and trekking through the swamp trying to figure out what's what and what goes where. So, um, you know, I, I like um, Tom's idea because I think it um, gets us to where we want to be and a bit budget this size, we could find twenty-five to $30,000 or, or even more, I think. I don't want to say relatively easily, but you can find it in there somewhere. Um, I, oh, and then uh, just, just a real quick go. one, just to add to the list. Um, thank you for that, Brian. Um, I do agree with uh, Gianna's point. I think we need to see an option, uh, probably multiple options that do not include the Mastway project. And then also um, I'd like to add to the list an option that has both the behavioral health counselor and the strings position. Uh, if I'm missing it, I apologize. It's but it's I don't seven. It is in six, I'm sorry, okay. Yep. And seven. And eight, and eight. Th they have them, okay, they have eight. okay, thank you. Yep. Um, so <laughs> I'll just chime in. Um, I disagree about taking out the um, Mass Bay cafeteria expansion. I think that's an important project. Um, so personally, you know, I, I think we should keep that in. If we take anything out, I would take out the AC at the high school. Um, so that is the one, that's my preference. I don't know as a board if we, I think part of what we do need to do, what I'd like to see us do tonight if possible, is possibly eliminate some of these options because eight or nine or 10 is just too many. And so maybe we can agree there's certain things on here um, that we definitely are not interested. For example, you know, option one, you know, taking out um, any, not using any revenue. I don't know, I'm just suggesting there may be certain options that we can just say, you know, as a board, we don't want to go down that road. Uh, personally, I do want to keep the cafeteria in. I would prefer if we had to take something out to take out the AC. Um, I do want to strongly say I support both positions the behavioral health and the strings. Um, I had already been convinced of the strings, but certainly the, the people that spoke tonight um, show that the community supports that as well. Um, the other, the last thing I would like to say is for the behavioral health, and I had a kind of an email exchange uh, with Dr. Morse about this, may not be as high as 134,000. That presumes licensure. If, in fact, as the job description is given on our yellow sheet, it doesn't require licensing, it just requires DOE certification. If that's the case, it would come in at a much lower cost because that's essentially the same as a school counselor type of position. Uh, Dr. Morris clarified they want to keep the option open if they do have someone come forward with a license. You know, they want to be able to hire that person. Um, but it might not necessarily, if they can't find someone with the license and it just comes in with someone that has um, school counseling certification or some kind of uh, education certification that wouldn't necessarily cost as much. Yes, Gianna. Oh, did you have something else you want? I wanted to make sure you were... Yeah, I'm done. That's, all, that's, that's, all, that's all I had. So <laughs> basically, I'm hoping that we can possibly eliminate some of these options tonight and maybe get a sense of where people stand as far as the positions possibly. Um, if, I, if I may, um, one of the things actually I'm concerned about, I know you're thinking about trying to eliminate some of the uh, options that we have here. 
Uh, I'm actually I'm concerned about removing the uh, air conditioning in the high school because we lost some instructional hours essentially during the heat wave in the beginning of the year. No? Because Wait, that was people, because I, the AC that we had already installed wasn't working. Yeah. So if we had had that AC in the tower, he would have been fine. Because okay, I because I'm I'm concerned about that. I want to have to be shuffling people around into rooms the, where they're. The cool. air conditioning in this budget is strictly, unless I'm mistaken, for the multi-purpose room mm -hmm. okay. at the high school. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the air conditioning that would be that we're talking about in this budget. It was, um, Gianna, it was the brand new air conditioning that was installed um, had a, a break in um, a cable and it was designed to work the week that was super hot and the people who installed it didn't realize they had severed the cable and so it took them that week to figure out what we, why it wasn't working. So it was installed, it just wasn't working. So I, I can see that it's for the multi-purpose room. One of the things I'd like to point out with the multi-purpose room is that is the only place in the high school that the orchestra can actually meet with 60 kids. So um, you've got instruments that are highly sensitive to temperature, and if you've got a baking room, that actually creates challenges. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm not really great on eliminating that as part of the budget, even though I know we're, we're trying to push it, but I, I'm saying that I have real concerns about it, and it looks like uh, Rebecca has something to say. So I just wanted to make sure, we didn't lose instructional time. There was, a, there was a time where the second floor, the new air conditioning wasn't working, but we had teachers with air conditioned rooms who actually were very, um, worked with their colleagues, and so we made a list of rooms that were accessible and had free periods, so teachers who were in the rooms where the AC wasn't working could move. And we also opened like the auditorium. So while they weren't in their regular classroom, in some cases, there was no instructional time loss. So I did want to just make sure that was understood. Okay. And if I could just come back in and say, um, you know, the goal is to air condition in the high school, and, you know, we'd like to stay on that goal if possible. Uh, you know, it is a priority that the board established under their strategic plan. And so, you know, the multi-purpose room this year, the cafeteria next year, other spaces in the building would largely be air conditioned except for the first floor classrooms. So we're con continuing to do that work. If the board can see their way to prioritizing that, I think is, it's a good thing. And I'm not done. Uh, I think just in the interest of cleaning up options, personally, and I don't know, it sounds like we can remove, or I would like to remove any of the options that don't include the two new positions, the mental health and the strings position. Are, are we in agreement that we would like to keep those two positions and just include options that include both those positions? Tom. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I think those, those um, you know, I've been in, a lot of these meetings, and I, I've never been to a year where I thought two positions were quite so essential. And I think it's we're, it's two new positions, but there's also one position, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, on the middle school, one less position in the middle school. Is that correct, Jim? That is correct. We have okay, so it's a net, a net ask of one new position, which I think is not an extravagant ask. So, um, so I, I think I would, I would agree with, with the Brian. Um, um, and that position, I think, if my numbers are correct, would affect 20% of the, you know, the middle school and the high school population, which is a pretty sizable population. Uh, yes, Matt. Sorry. Uh, um, Dan, sorry. That's, at this point, anyway, um, always keeping an open mind, obviously, I think those two positions are two of the top priorities in my mind uh, at this point. And also, um, just given what we've learned over the years over with um, you know, CIP um, projects, I'd like to get some more detail on the Mast Way uh, first phase um, project. Um, also acknowledging we don't have our typical, um, you know, Director of Facilities at the moment. Uh, so Amy, I appreciate you sort of wearing that hat. Um, but would like to sort of dig into uh, some of the ramifications of that. So for example, we've talked about the kitchen being adequate. That's been, that was improved uh, prior to the pandemic, I believe. Um, would like some detail on impacts it would have to HVAC system, um, grounds, parking lot, um, you know, any other maybe unanticipated costs that would be required to either complete the project or would be a second phase and when would that when would that need to be completed 
Um, what are the ramifications of that for a future budget? I'd like to uh, pile on with Dan. Um, uh, Misty and then Amy also met me at Mastway on Monday because I thought it would be best if I actually went and took a look at that cafeteria. My kids attended Maharmet, so I'm familiar with that one, but not Mastway. What you could definitely say is that the cafeteria is significantly smaller. And I saw it with both the kindergarten and the first grade in there. The first grade had approximately 70-something kids, and you could see that it was it was crowded but functional within there. But uh, adding on to Dan's thing, there's a couple things that I learned while I was there. Um, some of it is that the space has some utilization issues. Um, there's round tables in there as the majority rather than the rectangular tables. Two of the round tables are actually not functional and they don't have a piece that's repairable. They, uh, I talked to the head custodian, you can't find the piece. So there's two tables at least that aren't being used in there yet are also stored in the room. So there's an area that's about six feet by 20 feet that doesn't, that's used for storage. So um, one of the things I'd actually like to look at is, you know, what would be the cost of getting rectangular tables in there and having them in a linear fashion the way it is in Maharam at about uh, space and flow and kids being able to move back and forth. Um, and one of the things I actually also am concerned about in there is that when the project extends out 40 feet, you're losing a chunk of the parking lot and everything that I could look at, um, redoing the parking lot is not part of the plan for the Massway cafeteria. And I can see that it's pushed on later into the, the capital improvement plan, but we'd have to address it almost immediately upon actually doing that project because it's gonna reroute the fire lane and everything else. And so I'm concerned about jumping the gun on this one a little bit before we actually have some better numbers on the table. Uh, I'm a little afraid about having a a budgetary overrun when I feel like we don't quite have the plan ironed out in a way that's satisfactory to me, <laughs> um, I, I find it concerning. So, uh, so I, I think it's a need, particularly if birth rates go up. I saw that there was an article where um, New Hampshire's birth rate did go up like, like 7% in 2022, which is extremely unusual. But how that would affect this district, I don't know, because I know that now kids are moving, parents, families are moving more into the district at the middle school level because it's so expensive to, to be here that um, people are trying to kick in into the middle school rather than the elementary school because of housing. So again, it's one of those things like, yes, we might have an increase in population, which means having a bigger cafeteria at Mass would be great, but if they're bumped into the middle school rather than coming at the elementary school, it's some numbers that I feel like we're lacking to make a very large fiscal decision. So that's why I'm a little hesitant on it. Absolutely, thank you, thank you Gianna. Um, I can contact Bowie Construction and get rough numbers uh, for both you and, and Dan on the full board. And um, the construction did include the redirection of the parking lot. So uh, that was part of it. And um, in both Moharamet and Massway, parking is extremely limited. So, uh, as you noted, future budgets would have to include the expansion of both of those parking lots because they're ridiculously small g given what's what's going on. But I'll get some harder numbers for you to look at um, in relation to that. The only other thing I would say um, related to that project is, um, as we learned from the middle school project, construction costs don't go up by inflation rate. They go up astronomically. And so anytime you have a major project, the sooner you can get it done, the better, because the costs are just going to continue to go. This particular building, as an example, was $50 million about, and their build, the, the estimate to build a school that only holds 200 more kids in Concord is $180 million. And this is, and this is just three years later. Um, the, this same size school in Massachusetts was $150 million. So once we got past COVID, contracting prices went through the roof to try to compensate for a time when they weren't getting projects. So I just play that into your calculus as you think about, you know, do it now, do it later. Um, and again, it's totally up to the seven of you. So I'll get those numbers the best I can and hopefully it'll get you further along. Um, uh, the other thing I'd like to see right now is, are we in agreement to use the trust fund money, the 500,000, can we, can we say that we want only options that include the trust fund money? Are we good with that? Because then we could eliminate 
option one, or, well, actually, maybe they all include, no, option one doesn't include it. Um, yeah, so, it, I mean, again, just in the interest of trying to eliminate. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll take out that as, a, as an option, any option that does not include the 500,000. Is there anything else that we can kind of whittle away? Uh, based on the conversation about the two positions, I to me it looks like we can eliminate one right. through five or six. Oh no, one through five, unless I'm missing something. So one I'll create one options. I'll create options that include using that five hundred thousand from the trust funds with both positions, and then of those show will show with or without air conditioning, with or without massway. That should streamline it down. And then I'll incorporate the additional adequacy and I'll see if what other cuts are, not cuts, but moving around some money in the budget to come up with making that fit for Tom. That sounds well, good. Do okay. you want to remind the board before we end because uh, you know Dan's question was right dead on earlier. We do have a special meeting on the 29th. It's not a workshop. It's a special meeting, meaning that it's a duly constituted meeting of the board where you can make decisions. Okay? Um, so I guess at this point, we are in agreement that we'll need, we need that meeting to be yeah. able to. Okay. Based on this evening's conversation, yeah. I'd say yes. Yeah, because we won't be ready for the six. Okay. All right. Um, all right, then. Any other final comments about the budget before we move on? All right, um, and then so uh, public comments. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? Uh, looks like there are none. So our closing actions and our next meeting will be November 29th at seven o'clock right here. Um, and then we will have uh, regular meeting minutes, I mean regular meetings on December 6th and December 20th. Just, 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 just before you adjourn, Heather, do we own the 29th so that we can just spend it on budget? Yeah, I'm gonna want you for the 29th too. Or we'll talk about that during the workshop. We are gonna have to meet a bit more frequently in the next four weeks as a board to do some work before we get the candidates here. So, so um, for clarification, are we looking for a split meeting on the 29th? Mm, let's go with yes. With the caveat that I might want it to be a day or two sooner. So can I? Oh, you, you probably should get some dates then. While yeah, we got it. We'll okay. Just given the late date of our deadline to make a decision, I really would be a lot more comfortable if we just had a, just a dedicated school board meeting as opposed to trying to split time. Uh, if that's what I'm hearing, maybe I'm not hearing it correctly, but. It would be finalizing interview questions. So it wouldn't be a workshop per se. We would have done most of the work already. It would just be finalizing the questions for the interview because there are bits and pieces we need to do in order to be ready if the first candidate is here on the 30th, we are not going to get done any other way. Okay, I just, again, the budget is our, and we've, we've lost a lot of time already with several truncated meetings already. I just, I just think we should, I mean, I, I anticipate we will probably have time to do both, but if we schedule it so that we're committing to both, then you know, you've talked about it, Denise, about how trying to honor two different commitments on a schedule on the same night. It's pretty challenging. I just want us to be free to have every all the time we need to really wrestle with the budget and hopefully come up with a, a conclusion. But that's that's my take. So the, when the I'm, good oh. news about that particular that's just us. So we can you know, we can spend a bunch of time doing budget things and then move off and do our own thing afterwards. We won't have to coordinate like we have to meet Carolyn at eight. It's just us. So that frees up, it will be a marathon, but it frees up um, like we don't have to end a budget discussion at X time 
because we expect to be talking with somebody right then. So. And I would just point out also that the 29th is a special meeting so that we can be ready to close the budget on the first meeting of December. So it, I think if we spend the majority of the time on the budget and we have the guidance we need administratively, we'll be ready for you on, uh, I think it's the 6th, right? Yes. Yeah. So I, I, think, I think we're queuing up right, Dan, tonight was really helpful because now we can start focusing our options based on what we heard. And then the 29th, you guys will refine your conversations further, maybe even be ready to make some decisions on the 29th. And then the 6th we close. So I, th I think we're okay, as long as we don't lose half the meeting. I think we need to have just a really healthy, dedicated conversation on the budget. Does it make sense to see if we can take an hour on the 27th or 28th to meet over the questions? So that is um, because we can, so we need to clarify whether or not we can do that in workshop or non-public or if we have to have a meeting meeting to do that. So um, I mean, it feels like that could be a workshop. I think what you could do to prime that meeting, Heather, is send um, Wendy and I the questions. Send, send them to me. If it's just people sending me stuff individually and I'm just collating it to talk about. That's what I was getting at. Can we get yeah. a list in front of them that, that where they've already thought about the questions? Yeah, that was the plan and we can, okay. so as we work through it with Carolyn, we're gonna queue up the idea. It's the same process we did with the screening committee. It worked very well. So we'll queue up the idea of the questions. Um, people can percolate on them and send them to me based on what part of the profile it addresses and what other sort of category it addresses and then we come together and work on refining that down to the list of questions we wanna ask. Unlike the screening interview, we'll have a little bit more flexibility on the per candidate question, so it might take just a smidge longer. So I'm still trying to clarify, we're looking at an additional meeting possibly the 27th or 28th, no, oh yes, and but it, we're not sure yet if it needs to be a regular meeting, a workshop, or even a non-public, is that kind of where we're at? It sounds like we should try to find time on the 28th or the 27th to meet as a workshop, which it sounds like it can be, just to do the, the questions, and then we'd have the whole special meeting on the 29th for the budget. Is there anybody that is gonna have a big problem finding time on those two days? There's a competency meeting on the 28th at six. Okay, competency, okay. Six, uh, I'm gonna guess probably an hour, an hour and a half. It's developing the questions, right? Yes. Yeah. And the 27th will be speech. Forum, yeah. Actually, Rebecca, can I grab you back? At the, what, I didn't actually know anything about that forum. Can you repeat what that forum is about? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the parent forum is about the hate speech and vandalism that's been happening in the high school, and then the letter that Dr. Morse put out addressing that um, and giving parents a chance it's in, to come. It's in the memo that yeah. I sent out on hate speech. What I, time is that meeting? 6.30 I mean, on the 27th. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Janet, did you get that? I got can, the memo, but I somehow didn't see the date of uh, the meeting. Yeah, so it was right towards the bottom. That's okay, I just must have missed it. So my, my error on that one, but now I know okay. what it is. That's I was just concerned know. you weren't getting it. And what is the 28th conflict? Uh, the competency-based uh, forum for the, the survey to evaluate a competency-based learning at uh, I did. That's the first I've heard of this. When? It's the committee. It's a it's subcommittee. Oh, it's a subcommittee. It's a subcommittee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, could you possibly move that? No? No. What? We can. We do also have next week. We don't have to cram it in to the week after Thanksgiving. We could maybe do it the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So I know uh, I have a hold for budget for that Tuesday that we're not going to use. So we we have we can try to calendar this out. And if it's not everybody who can makes it, we will figure it out. Can I just. 
I mean, I think rather than having, maybe two meetings is the right thing, but it seems if we'd start at six, we go six to eight on the budget, I think that would be enough time for that. Then they start at eight to do the questions. And then, you know, if we went a little past nine, I, I don't see it taking much longer than that. Maybe I'm naive on that, but would that be possible just to start start earlier? It didn't take us, I think we did with screening, it took us an hour, hour and a half to get the questions nailed down once we sorted through everything. Mm -hmm. um, but if we... We also, we also had some sample questions to build on. We're gonna have the same sample questions. Okay. So um, we've, yeah, that packet you already got, you all got my email, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that will help seed your questions and you can send them to me and I can group them, we can go through them and we can do all of that. With the screening committee that took about an hour or an hour and a half because we were wordsmithing too. So, um, so Tom's suggestion has the advantage of not having you guys have a, another meeting. I don't know if, if that resonates with everyone. I just need to make sure that I post it. That's all. I, I would. I think that would be a, a good idea is to start at six o'clock on the 29th. That does give us. If we, and we may not need the full two hours for budget, which means we can just go into yeah. the. Um, or do we have to stick to a particular time for the workshop? Uh, no, uh, we'll post the, the post the meeting as a special meeting, and it starts at six o'clock. I believe it's at the high school, it is scheduled for the high school, not here. And then if the meeting's over at seven thirty, you guys can own the meeting from that point on. Keep in mind too, the only uh, item on the agenda for that meeting will be the budget, so we don't have all that other right. stuff we have to do. So I don't even think it'll take two hours. All right, so I think we are good. We're going, to, our meeting will be, start at six o'clock on the 29th. It will be at the high school, not here. And then we will follow that with the questions or anything else that related to uh, preparing for those final interviews. All right. Um, we are, all right, I think we are all set. We do not have a non-public. Um, and so we will adjourn and then continue with our workshop with NASDAQ. Can I have a, m a motion to adjourn? Heather, a second. Brian, all in favor? Seven in favor. Student rep is in favor. We are adjourned.